Hello, and welcome to Model Airplane Maker. In this video, I'll show you that single colors on aircraft do not have to be boring, and I'll demonstrate how I vary the tones of paint in order to replicate fading and wear and tear on models. So grab your airbrush and let's go. I think the best way to begin this video is to discuss what we're trying to do here. On our models, we can either have a factory fresh finish, a museum finish, and those things are relatively easy to paint. What we're trying to do with pretty much every other technique that we can come across is we're trying to get some fading, wear and tear, um, weathering on our paint, on our models, in order to replicate what that might have looked like uh, in the field. So a lot of these airplanes would have been uh, definitely baking in the sun in the South Pacific or otherwise subject to rain, uh, sunlight, wear and tear, everything on a field somewhere in Europe, especially when we're talking about World War II aircraft. So these techniques are all about figuring out different ways of showing that variation of paint because paint on the real thing wouldn't weather uniformly and it also probably wouldn't have been applied uniformly. So what we're trying to do is have this sort of random pattern of wear in a way that's easy to, to put on. Now, black basing, pre-shading, post-shading, all of these are attempting to do similar, uh, they're trying to get to a similar finish. They just do it in different ways. And even uh, after you've done all that, some people really um, are advocates of using oils to do dot filters and streaking. Again, it's all about fading and putting in variation on your, on your finish. This process that I'm doing is a variation, I think it's a variation of what's commonly referred to as black basing. So it's not uh, a pure black basing technique at all. And I'm not saying that I came up with this, it's just sort of developed through uh, looking at different uh, videos and, and seeing different results and experimenting on my own. It's a three step process. So I start with a black primer and then I do this thing called a marbling or modeling coat, which is uh, being demonstrated here with a very uh, fine tipped airbrush, very low pressure and a thin mix of paint. So somewhere between 25 and 30% paint to thinner. Um, and you know, it's, it's not, there's no hard and fast rules. These are all very uh, approximate. Uh, and then even a drop of paint retarder. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm going low pressure on the airbrush, typically less than 10 PSI, there is, and I'm using acrylic paint, there is a tendency for the paint to dry at the tip of the airbrush while I'm doing this. And one way to reduce that is to use paint retarder, just a few drops. And that way the, the paint, uh, at least, You'll, you'll experience less paint drying on the tip of your airbrush. And when it does happen, and it will, it clogs it up a little bit and you're just gonna have to use a Q-tip or a cloth that's dipped in some thinner and clean off that uh, tip and keep going. When I'm actually doing the technique, it's, it's a lot of fun. So you go low and slow, you uh, go random, um, on the, on the areas of the model. So unlike, say, pre-shading the panel lines a nice straight black color, what I'm doing here is I'm being a lot more random with spraying these marbling patterns. And don't worry about making mistakes because it actually helps with the, uh, <laughs> it actually helps with the finish that you don't have perfectly black panel lines here and there or uh, perfect um, uh, areas of, of areas of uniformity we'll say on on your uh, on your model 
uh, not only randomizing the pattern is important, but it uh, even go for randomizing a little bit of the undercoat. So here you can see that I've used a gray when I first started this, and now I'm mixing a little tiny bit of brown with the gray. And I've even gone so far as to even get some staining. So I will even use a all out brown, very thin brown, and hit certain areas of the airframe, particularly around the wing roots, where I know there would have been some boots <laughs> or other dirt. And that'll, it, when, you, uh, when you do the overcoat, that will show through just a little bit more um, a, a different tone to show that someone has been working there or that it just got dirty there. I'm jumping from area to area. It helps with the randomization. It helps just to, to shoot a little bit here, then go to a different spot, shoot that a little bit. And you know, it's a, it's a great way of being creative. I find this way to be a bit easier than the pure black basing technique. It is a variation where I am doing all of this marbling ahead of time. And then I go over, which you'll see later on in the video, that I use a thin base coat to blend it all together, almost like a pre-shade technique. Now, the risk on that is always that you go too far, and you'll see that in just a minute. We'll, we'll go through that. But in the end, if you use thin paints and you take your time, again, uh, low pressure, thin paints, you really mitigate that risk that you're just going to obliterate all of your modeling marbling when you blend it all together with your blend coat. There are photo etch masks on the market that help with this, um, or at least they, they make it easier. Because as you see, I'm just doing this freehand. You can get a photo etch mask just for this application where you place the mask over the, over the model, and then you hit that with uh, your, your marbling coat of paint, and it gives you some very randomized patterns and it and, and it works so absolutely with this technique if you want to use a um a photo etch set it would it would work very very well you'll notice that i'm moving along rather quickly as i'm applying the modeling to the fuselage wings tail planes that sort of thing and one of the reasons is that you can apply this all over the entire fuselage. It, you don't really need to change it up for top and bottom, especially for a plane like the Zero that I'm doing, which had a uniform color top and bottom. If you do have an airplane that has, say, a white bottom and um, a darker upper side, you can continue to do this in terms of have it have the same modeling uh, being done with the paint on the top and bottom or you can lighten up a little bit where the white is going to be on the bottom and that's you could do that by just having more whites lighter grays uh, beiges instead of browns that type of thing because when you're going to do the top coat you'll be spraying thin white paint and it might take a few more coats to get that blended to a point where the effect is subtle. You don't want to have to use a lot of paint to cover over the modeling at the end of the day. As I'm going through this demonstration, you can see that I'm uh, just doing the simple modeling and as you progress through this technique, and I've certainly done it on subsequent aircraft, where I have used some staining around the ports where the shells would have fallen out of the bottom of the airplane. I definitely did it where there are exhaust stains, so I would use some exhaust stain colors just to start the process of staining the finish with paint 
before I put the base coat on. Um, I also think you could you even do fuel and oil. You could do all sorts of things. You, you have that ability because it is very easy to apply this and then easy to apply the top coat over it and you don't have to worry too much that ah, it didn't show through enough or it showed through maybe a little bit too much, but you're gonna use subsequent weathering techniques to go over um, exhaust port staining, sorry, exhaust staining and fuel staining and all that kind of thing. As you're finishing this up, I find that if you take the model, sort of flip it around and um, hold it away from you for a bit, you can look at it overall and see if you're missing any spots or if you'd like to add a little bit more color here and there and, uh, and fill that in as you go. So here it is. It's pretty much uh, done and ready for the next step. Okay, we are now at the last stage of this process, which is the top coat. And what I'm doing here is using a thin mix of the base color. And when I say thin, usually I thin about 50-50, 40-60 type of thing for a, a base coat. But in this case, I'm going a bit thinner, uh, typically starting at 40. 40% uh, paint, 60% thinner, and even, and even then maybe not. What uh, that gives you is a lot more control over top over the top coat. So as you can see, I'm applying this fairly broadly, quickly, and you can see it start to blend, but it's still, you can definitely see the mottling underneath. The thinner the paint, of course, the longer this takes, but then you have more control over that risk of completely obliterating your marbling, uh, your modeling underneath. And what I tend to do is start it, uh, give it that first coat, flip it over to the other side, do it there. Obviously it's not finished and I can control it that way. And then I come back, I can um, work on a different section, start blending that top coat and then take it away and the reason why I'm, I'm saying it this way is that you you have that um, need to step away from the the paint booth so to speak in order to make sure that you don't go over all of that great work you did before with too much uh, top coat when I got back into the hobby about 10 years ago it seemed that the first technique like this that I tried was panel line shading. So I would go along each of the panel lines of the model with black paint and paint those first and then do a, a blending over top. And that technique has come, well, there's, a, there's been a few knocks on that recently. <laughs> and I think that the biggest knock on it in terms of, uh, of whether it's realistic or not 
is that it gives too uniform of an appearance at the end of the process. So you have almost a quilted look if you just follow perfect lines over your, your panel lines and such. And I don't disagree. This technique is a, is a variation. You're certainly not seeing a uniform uh, technique here being applied here, a uniform pattern of wear. You're seeing all sorts of nice color variations. But I think the biggest knock on the panel shading is that it's it, it tends to be too stark and, and then that quilting comment is made. And as you can see, the panel lines are still there. I'm, I didn't do the panel line technique, but this modeling technique it largely is the same. So when it comes to that quilting comment, my thought is, and always has been, that if you see that or if you're getting that impression from uh, seeing the model with this technique, it's because there wasn't enough base coat that was being put over the top. Like It hasn't been blended enough. I think that the, the secret to all of these techniques, be it black basing or this modeling or even panel line shading, is that it has to be subtle. It has to be a subtle technique or a subtle finish at the end where it's not stark. You don't have that quilted look, which I think you're going to get with any of these if you don't uh, have a considered approach to it when you're when you're spraying in the spray booth. So all this to say take your time and go over your model with the with the airbrush um, in, in terms of the top coat step away if you have to in terms of controlling yourself because you're playing a bit of chicken with your painting and uh, you don't again you don't want to obliterate that finish you want it to just peek through and you definitely don't want to have a very stark finish like you see right now that's not enough it needs to be blended more it needs to be um, uh, hidden a little bit more with the top coat I'm flipping it over I'm working on different sections I of course I didn't step away from the model in this case but if that's what it takes in order to control this uh, so much the better and at the end of it you're gonna have a nicely blended subtle wear on your aircraft and then you can start the rest of your weathering techniques on top of that if you wish what i what i then would do is i would uh, start with the decals and and go from there and and the oil washes and, and all that kind of thing to, to highlight the panel lines one other thing i should mention as I'm applying this base coat over the modeling is you you want to avoid that tendency to pull the brush far away from the model in, in, in order to get broader coverage with the paint. You, you certainly have to do it a little bit but the further you pull it back the more you risk the paint drying in the air on its way to the surface of the model and then you get that pebbly and sometimes even powdery finish uh, over the model because it, it, it's drying before it hits the surface. So you want to be, of course, a little bit further away from the model and you definitely want to apply more thin paint, but you don't want to have uh, almost like a spray can effect where you're, you're really far away from the model and the paint's drying en route. Now, if that does happen to you, where you get that pebbly finish or even powdery finish when you're applying this technique, it's not the end of the world. Actually, it's best to put the model down, let it dry uh, for at least a day. And then what you can do is take a cloth or a t-shirt and rub down the model. You're almost using that cloth to polish it. And that'll knock off all of the dry paint certainly all of the powder and then you'll probably end up with having to go over the the the, the airplane one more time with the base coat and you'll uh, you'll certainly have learned your lesson and you can apply that uh, that base coat a little bit closer a little bit more wet as it as it's going on
So far there's been a couple of coats put over the model. You can definitely see the mottling, marbling effect underneath. I think it's still too stark, too obvious. So what I've been doing while I'm spraying this model is just stopping, <laughs> taking a look, evaluating, ah, it's too stark, put a little bit more on. I can't emphasize enough to take your time with the thin coats and to move from section to section and get that, um, get that paint on thin enough where the, where the finish is subtle. So now I'm just getting to the end of covering up that marbling, being very careful to keep it subtle, but not obliterate it. And I'll probably, I think I probably flipped that around a few times just to make sure that I was uh, getting to where it needed to go. So here is the, the end effect. You have nice subtle pattern of paint fade underneath the main coat. It is not quilted. It is definitely a worn faded appearance and uh, fairly easy to do. It takes a little bit of practice maybe, but should be easy to do. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and uh, tell everyone if you think that uh, they might benefit. Thanks again. Bye-bye.